Hey TechBlot users, this is uh, Darrell Rittenberg. I'm the product manager for TechBlot 360 EX and TechBlot uh, in general. And I wanted to quickly go through a tutorial on using our streamlines and stream traces. So I have a model here which uh, we're looking at two helicopters flying in formation and we want to generate some stream traces um, which we can actually show here in a second. So to generate stream traces make sure that first you have your vector variables selected under plot vector variables in general it should be correct um, on the off chance that when you load the data tuckplot doesn't recognize the variables you may need to select them here if you do not select them here it, it will prompt you and say hey I don't know what the velocity vectors are but not a big deal once you have the vector set you can select the stream trace tool and you can come in and quickly add stream traces uh, just by clicking on the surface of an object. So depending on the object of interest you can see that uh, it will use that as a seed point. If I don't want the stream traces, may perhaps I don't see them as particularly where I want them, I can delete them all. I can um, use exact XYZ positions for stream traces so in principle I can say I want them to be at a particular X, Y, and Z and uh, you can create a rake and do XYZ final, XYZ starting. You can do IJK positions as well this data is unstructured and therefore it's uh, not particularly uh, appropriate but that is another way to do it. We have volume lines, surface lines, volume ribbons, and volume rods and I'll show you a couple of these here so we'll, we'll go ahead and use our placement tool we'll generate 10 these will be volume ribbons and I'll just come in say here and generate a few and you can kinda get a sense of uh, those based on uh, the ribbons now the ribbons themselves you can see they're, they're somewhat thin if you chose to you can go to rod ribbon and just uh, increase the, the ribbon width so that'll make them wider. Um, you, If I was using rods you can also do the same thing with rods. From a timing perspective you can show dashes I don't need markers here so what that allows you to do once you have those markers shown is if I animate those by clicking on animate if I animate them on screen now you can see uh, that it's going to animate those stream traces. You can slow it down by putting in more steps. And uh, in addition, I don't need to do that, I can go through more loops as well, number of cycles, say if I move that up, now it will go very fast, but it will keep going until I press stop. Okay. And we'll just redraw this. So that's uh, one strategy, again, is to interactively place them. You, of course, could use explicit coordinates and place them. Um, one other strategy, which a lot of people prefer, which is to grab, say, a geometry. So in this case, if I right-click, you can see this is the main rotor. So if I wanted to drop in a series of stream traces and uh, just off of this rotor, this uh, rotor, we can go into stream traces and from placement, We'll do the ribbons again, or actually for for a difference we'll use rods. And we'll use uh, the surface of this, this object, which is selected. I'm going to delete all the stream traces and we'll generate so 500 of them. So it's going to use the rotor and it's going to generate 500 stream traces off the rotor, which you can see here. Um, and so it generated 500 very quickly. And if I turn off the slice, you can see this a little better we now have quite a few stream traces again if uh, those were misplaced you can always delete them another thing you may want to do is surface stream traces so again if we select an object go into the stream trace dialog you can change from a volume rod to a surface line use the surface and uh, just for simplicity we'll just do 10 so you can see what that looks like 
and we'll go ahead and create them. So in this case, it's going to create those stream traces only on the surface. We'll combine it to the surface of this object. Now this particular solution, that's probably not the most appropriate thing to do as it really isn't a surface per se. Remember, this is supposed to represent the rotors. Uh, so the integration does take a, a few seconds here, but you can see it's added uh, the stream traces directly to the object. Okay. You could have done the same thing on a slice, so if I right click here on a slice, now that I have the slice, I can go to say volume lines and go to say a hundred or even a thousand, and I can create those. And so basically what TechPlot's going to do now is it's going to use the the plane and generate a thousand or in this case yeah, a thousand close to a thousand stream traces. Okay. So it gets a bit messy. Turn the slice off, you can kind of get a sense of what's going on. Um, but that's how you can generate stream traces with TechPlot. Other things that you can do, which is kind of convenient, if you right click on a stream trace, you can actually extract them. And the extraction, you can see it's actually generating each one that's going to extract it. I, I have a thousand, is probably uh, an unnecessarily large number, but the idea is simple it's going to extract each one into a zone and uh, I interrupted it here, we don't need to wait for that, but in principle if it was working it would, add, it would just add the stream traces here. And maybe just to illustrate that I'll, I'll delete all and um, we'll just go with a simple rake placement and we'll just put 20 in here and then we can right click and extract, it'll just be a little faster. Okay. So once they're extracted, or I'm assuming it's extracting, the uh, data will show up here as stream traces. You can see they're now a series of zones. And that's the gist of using stream traces. The other thing that you may want to do if the data is unsteady is to use particle paths or streak lines. So particle paths would be more appropriate for this example as this is not unsteady. We can specify mass as well as a ballistic coefficient. We can also specify gravity, like minus z and put in you know, 0.9. Uh, we can have those particles start with zero velocity, which is um, often interesting, and we can have them, you can also specify that the particles have temperature, and if you want to, you can even use ablation. Okay. And so if I calculate these, uh, you can see uh, where those particles go. If I turn on scatter, uh, you can see this, these points here represent the... Uh, I'll hide that real quick. And we'll hide that. And hide that. Okay. So these are the particle paths that we calculated. So um, if you want to change those, you can go in here and we'll select all and we'll just change the scatter to show a sphere and yeah, for fun we'll change this to show pressure. Okay. Close that and give it a second to update. Uh, spheres, uh, it looks like I have quite a few spheres there and the thing about uh, the way that we render spheres that that can take a couple of seconds. And that's how you basically control stream traces. Thanks for watching, and uh, let me know if you have questions, and we'll generate some additional tutorials for you. Thank you again.